my storytellers, how are you today? And welcome back to another story time with Steffi. Now today's story, I was inspired by my curly mane this morning. So we are going to be reading along to The Lion Inside. Now this one is written by Rachel Bright and illustrated by Jim Field, who also illustrates our Oi series. So... It should be a very exciting one. Come along and discover the joy of storytelling with me and the lion inside. The Lion Inside, written by Rachel Bright, illustrated by Jim Field. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him, ever, at all. Hello! He got trod on and sat on and missed out for stuff, ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. This huge, toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd he was made of strong stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then, late one dark night, in his mini mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse, with the weeniest squeak, was a little more grrr and a little less meek? Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse. I must find out how. I will learn how to roar, and I will learn it now. But gulp? Oh my gosh! There was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. It was time to be strong. Take a chance. After all, forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave, and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do, but if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The further he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. Uh, um, gulp. Pardon me, uh, uh, wake up, Mr. Lion, you've got company. Uh, squeak, Mr. Lion, what I've come to you for is a squeak. Do you think you could teach me your roar? A silence befell that twinkling plain lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane time slowed right down why it felt like a week then he opened his mouth and let out an eek the lion was shaking his paws all a fumble he was backing away with a scrambling tumble Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. 
Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment for sure, when Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out, and for that you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day, and always, the two were a pair. They both liked the rock better, now the rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head, and lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. What a fantastic story. Thank you for joining me on that storytelling journey with The Lion Inside, written by Rachel Bright and illustrated by Jim Field. Now, we do have a few questions for you. Here we go, question number one. What colour was the mouse in our story? Was he A, a brown mouse, B, a red mouse, or C, a white mouse? Shout out your answer now. Amazing storytellers, the answer is A, a brown mouse. Question number two. Now this one's a little bit different. I would like you to tell your adults in the room why you think the brown mouse didn't like to be small. Tell them now. Good work, storytellers. I'm sure your answers were fantastic. Well done with those questions, storytellers. You're getting absolutely amazing at those. Now, this is the part of story time with Steffi where I'd normally show a piece of your artwork, but unfortunately, I've not had any sent in this week. So I'm just going to remind you how to send in your artwork. All you need to do is get your adults to send it in to either our Instagram page, which is at Storytime with Steffi, or our Facebook page, which is just Storytime with Steffi. They just need to take a picture and send it in to those pages. And your artwork could be shown on this channel next week in our next video. What an amazing way to celebrate your creativeness. Hmm? Oh, and also remember, if you don't fancy doing anything arty or creative, then you can just get a shout out. So just get your adults to message me on at Storytime with Steffi, our Instagram page, or our Facebook page, just Storytime with Steffi, and you could get a shout out on next week's video. <gasps> Exciting. That is all we've got time for here on Storytime with Steffi for another week. I'll see you next time. Bye, storytellers. Thank you.